Are you ready to stop feeling stuck, lost, or confused about what to do next in your career? Then the Manifest Your Career podcast is just right for you. With me, your host, Dr. Norma Reyes. The Manifest Your Career podcast offers you career advice that integrates your mind, body, and spirit. It's time you start listening to your own inner guidance. Tune in each week to learn how to combine your intuition, strategy, and logic so that you can manifest the career of your dreams. Hey everyone, welcome back. This is episode 99 and today I will be talking to you guys about transitions. Life is full of transitions. And, you know, it's during those times that we begin to feel overwhelmed and challenged. And, you know, some transitions are expected and some are not. This is why it's so important that you have strategies or routines in place to help you manage the ups and downs from life transitions. Having a daily routine helps ground you. Having support that helps you feel better when you are feeling low because when you are overwhelmed, stressed, and challenged, you're likely feeling pretty low. And having a support system for yourself, whether it's a coach, whether it's a friend, family, whoever that you can go to during those moments to help uplift you is so important. Life is full of transitions. Like, (laughs) I think when we don't have life transitions going on is maybe when we feel that slowdown, when we feel like nothing is moving forward. But when transitions are happening, then it's like the opposite, right? So it's like a roller coaster. Some really common ones, of course, are starting a new job, going to college, graduating from college, moving to a new city, getting married, having kids, kids going to school, kids going to college, changing careers. And then other transitions that may not feel as positive are dealing with major illnesses or an injury, a loss of a loved one, or building a business. So they, these are just a few of them, but they are so many life transitions. And right now I'm going through my own life transition, transitions where I am sending off my first child to college while also today, the day of recording this episode is my last day of my nine to five. And, you know, I've been preparing for this and all of this week, it's been the back and forth. Like, is this the right decision? How are we going to pay our bills? Did I make a mistake by doing this? And, you know, there was not a part of me that wanted to change the decision because obviously I still could at any time. But I was just very much of like in the space of like, is this a terrible decision? And so I did have some people support me through it, remind me like you've been planning this out. You wouldn't make a decision that you didn't feel confident in and, you know, more support that way that I wasn't even expecting or needing to know that I needed to hear, but also hearing support from others of like, you know, this feeling that you have it's going to come and go as an entrepreneur, you know, and so knowing that kind of also prepares me for the transitions of being an entrepreneur, where feeling the ups and the downs. So how can you manage these life transitions? So here are some ways, here are four ways that you can manage those transitions. One is creating a plan, setting realistic expectations, asking for help and staying positive and resilient during these transitions which can be tough and this is not saying don't feel your emotions but also don't dwell in them you know find ways to help you get back to being grounded to lift yourself up from the lows 
So life transitions are happening in your life almost every year. You know, some might be big, some might be small, some might impact you completely, some might impact your family and they affect you. But it's super important to have a routine. But before I go into the routine part, I'm going to talk about how to manage a transition that you have like you prepared for, right? Because some transitions, like maybe a loss of a loved one or losing a job, being laid off, you can't have a plan pre-made for that. But by having an idea of like what you want to do, if something like that were to happen, also helps, right? So life planning is also very important. If you don't have that in place, just start looking into it and maybe talk to someone about it. So creating a plan, Now, when you hear that, you might feel like, oh my God, that sounds overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be anything elaborate. You know, it can be helpful to just have a general idea of what you feel you need during this transition. If you're starting a new job, create a list of things you need to prepare, such as researching the company, updating your resume, practicing interview skills. As I'm transitioning to be full-time in entrepreneur, then that list could include what's my work schedule going to be like? What, how do I want to break down my working days? When am I seeing clients? When am I not seeing clients? When am I working on different areas of my business? And what supports do I have? And currently I am in a mastermind with a coach, with a group of other entrepreneurial women. So that is definitely a support that I appreciate that we meet weekly. And honestly, yeah, you, if you want to be as successful as you want to be, I highly recommend finding a support group for yourself. It doesn't necessarily have to be paid. There's a lot of free resources, a lot of free support groups out there. And of course, you know, a coach can always help you be more accountable to yourself. The next thing is setting realistic expectations. Change can be difficult. So it's important to be patient with yourself. I could remind it for myself too. And not expect to adjust overnight. And I love that I'm doing this episode during my own transition because this is a great reminder for myself that next week, my first day, not having to report anywhere and you know the i'm just like i have so many thoughts just even saying those those words right like i will be my own boss i will be deciding what i am doing what needs to get done in order to be successful in my business and honestly like i have so many thoughts right now that it's just a reminder that it's important for me to create a list for myself. I always tell my clients to create an ideal day so that I will definitely be doing that. Next week will not be a, it will be a prep week, you know, for me. It will be a week where when I told me to clean my desk, it is a big old mess of all the weeks just piling on, not putting in the time to keep my space tidy, right? And when we are feeling overwhelmed, when we are going through life transitions, this is what happens. You know, you begin to leave areas of your desk home life untidy, right? They could be tangible or they could be things like money, right? Like, oh, I'm not looking at my budget as much. But what's important is to set some realistic expectations on what you can do. You know, I cannot expect that next week, day one, I'm going to know exactly what I'm going to be doing. What I can do is decide, okay, I'm going to take this week, clean up my space, create the routine that I want, adjust to it, and then also reduce overworking because the whole point of becoming an entrepreneur for me was to make more money in less time and have more time for myself, have more time for my family, and just really have more joy in my life because I had gone to a place in at my nine to five that I just wasn't happy anymore. It wasn't fulfilling. The what I was receiving from my job wasn't enough for me anymore. And that was one of the deciding factors to decide to leave my nine to five and go full time into my business. 
The next thing that you can do is ask for help. Don't be afraid to reach out to your friends, family, colleagues for support during a life transition. They can help offer you guidance, encouragement, and practical help. You know, it's so important to ask for help. A lot of times we need help and we want help, but no one knows that we need it. They, this happens to everyone. And it's not that you don't want the help sometimes. Sometimes it's just that you believe that others can see you struggling why aren't they helping me? Why aren't they doing this? Don't they see me? Don't they see that I need help? And what happens is we are just so wrapped up in ourselves that we don't even notice that whoever is around you, your family, your support system is in their own world, right? Needing their own help with whatever's going on in their lives. So if you need help, ask for it. And if you don't even know what to ask for, just let people know what's going on. You know, I'm going through this transition, but speaking of that, I don't know that I've really told family. So definitely we'll be sharing that more with family more directly. I think everyone's known that I've, it's something I've wanted to do, but I haven't actually shared it with family or ways on how I need help. I don't know how I need help from my family during this time, but definitely we'll just let them know, right? Because then once people know what is going on in your life, they can support you in ways that you may not even know they can. And the last one is it's so important to stay positive and resilient. And this is not that whole toxic positivity thing where it's like just keep your chin up and you know forget about your feelings or something change can be challenging but it's so important for growth so focus on the positive aspects of the transition remind yourself that you are capable of handling it whatever the life transition is whether it was planned or not you remind yourself that you are strong enough to go through this life transition. And then, you know, find ways to support yourself to stay positive and look and focused at the good things, the good things that can come out of this particular life transition, whether it's a positive one or one that maybe is not so positive. And the last thing I want to talk to you guys, because it is so important, and I mentioned this in the beginning, is having a way to ground yourself. You can call it a grounding routine. You can do this in various different ways. Some of the ways that I suggest is having a routine, right? A daily routine that you do, which can include many different things, right? But whatever it is that works for you, you know, hygiene, maybe listening to some positive affirmations, reciting them, journaling, and then maybe doing some meditation, and then some yoga. Now, doing or trying to do all those at once when you're creating your routine for the first time can and will be overwhelming. So it's super important to start off with one thing at a time. Start off with affirmations and then move on to adding journaling and then adding you know meditation and yoga and why yoga and i'm not talking about like a 30 minute yoga routine i'm talking about a five to ten minute yoga routine the reason for yoga is because all of these different things affirmations journaling meditation they're more for your mind and your spirit but yoga helps ground you in your body, connecting your breath and your mind and your body into one. And so if you're new to yoga or even the thought of including it in your daily routine, start with a sun salutation. The sun salutations will help you just kind of begin the practice. It's very simple. If you have issues with body movement, just look for a modified version of it. It's something that I truly enjoy doing. And I would say in these last few weeks, 
I have not done my yoga routine. I haven't done meditation, yoga, and affirmations. And partly is because I have felt so exhausted with all the different things being thrown on me. But, you know, by not grounding myself, it has then led to me feeling like, oh my gosh, is this the right decision? Like, what am I thinking? And, you know, what about money? And all of these different things. And mind you guys, I have, oh, I have it all planned out. We have money and savings and I do have money coming in the business. So while it's super scary, me, the me that planned this out a few months ago, <laughs> planned for that, right? And the me that was doing her daily routine, doing her yoga, you know, showing up for herself the way that I my best self does was doing all the things that was working right so what do i need to do now that i'm in this transition and have fallen back on not doing those things is starting to build my routine up again yes i would love to go back to my usual routine of journaling getting my day started meditating affirmations but i don't want to overwhelm myself so what I will start with this coming week is really just my usual routine of listening to affirmations. I may or may not do some yoga and then journaling or a meditation. Like, and I say either or, right? So I want to do at least two to three things next week. But if I only go two, you know, that goes back to setting realistic expectations and knowing that, hey, at least I'm back to getting myself into the routine that is going to ground me and help me be resilient when things feel overwhelming. So life transitions are happening all the time. And some feel good, some feel scary, some feel, you know, sad, but all of them, you can get through them. All you got to do is start asking for help, creating a plan if you can, setting some realistic expectations, and then creating a routine that helps you stay positive and resilient during these transitions. That is all. If you are interested in coaching, I will be focusing on helping those learn how to manifest. So a little change what I've been doing, but if you are interested in learning more about manifesting and how you can overcome any manifesting blocks that you are having, schedule a discovery call with me and we can get started. Thank you for listening to the Manifest Your Career podcast. Are you ready to take action today? Visit manifestyourcareer.com to get started and schedule a free discovery call with me and gain clarity today.